Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, in whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, and we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth must bring thee the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry. Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The holy fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty, mine honorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon me to deliver man, thou didst not afford the virgin's womb. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who hast given unto us thy servants grace by the confession of the true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity, and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. We beseech thee that thou wouldst keep us steadfast in this faith and worship, and bring us at last to see thee in thy one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit livest and reignest one God forever and ever. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. 
while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome, and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food, and to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, 
the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. The Lord our Governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him, the son of man that you should seek him out? You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord.
I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity. By invocation of the same, the three in one, and one in three. This is the first verse of a great hymn attributed to St. Patrick, and sometimes known as St. Patrick's Breastplate. A breastplate is a piece of armor that covers the chest, protecting the single most vulnerable part of the human body, the heart. By invoking the name of the Trinity, Christians call on God to shield and protect them when they are in any need or danger. A later verse of the hymn invokes God's protection even more explicitly, asking God not merely to protect, but to surround and embrace the Christian fully in every situation. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. On the surface, this Sunday feast of the Holy Trinity would appear to be a celebration and an affirmation of a doctrine of our faith. And for that reason, many preachers find it difficult to preach on this day. They make the mistake of thinking that they're supposed to explain something that is unexplainable. When I was younger, I made that mistake often enough myself. But in my more mature years, I realized that this day is not at all about doctrine or formal theology. Rather, it's about the mystery of God's indwelling presence in our lives. The hymn, which invokes the Trinity, says nothing at all about believing. Rather, the hymn repeats again and again in verse after verse the believer's intent to bind himself to God, to bind herself to the mystery that created us in the image of God, to bind themselves to the mystery that brought the Son of God into this world in order that the image of God may be renewed in us. The Feast of the Trinity is about the image of God, the image of God which we behold in the mystery of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The image of God in which we ourselves are made. And the image of God to which we bind ourselves, just as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are bound to one another. The long first reading today tells the story of creation, but not in a literal way, not to describe the process by which God put the universe together. Such an account simply is not there. In Genesis, we read that God speaks a word and creation happens. There is no process, not even a big bang, Creation happens simply because God is. Genesis describes a scene of chaos into which God steps. The earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. Chaos is, in a sense, the antithesis of God, while the presence of God is order and meaning. It takes but a word from God. Yet he or let there be light for the darkness to disperse and creation to begin to take form. And in a series of words, the story moves towards its goal. Let there be light. Let the waters be separated. Let there be dry land. 
Let there be vegetation, and fish, and birds, and animals. And then, let us make humankind in our image. This is the whole point of the story, the creation of humanity in the image and likeness of God. But note that it's all related. It's not a series of separate and distinct creations of various elements of a complex but interesting puzzle. Humanity is not created simply as the icing on a most wonderful cake. Humanity is created to have dominion, to stand in close relationship to the whole creation, both as fellow creatures and as stewards of all that God has made. And the fact that humanity is created in the image of God is a signal that God continues to be fully connected, closely related, and profoundly present in and with all that he has made. I bind unto myself today the virtues of the starlit heaven, the glorious sun's life-giving ray, the whiteness of the moon at even, the flashing of the lightning free, the whirling winds, tempestuous shocks, the stable earth, the deep salt sea, around the old eternal rocks. Only God is eternal. But because he is the creator of all things and continues to be present to and in all that he has made, creation too is in a sense eternal. The old eternal rocks will stand as long as the eternal God sustains them. And as we are created in the image of the eternal God, we too come to share in the eternity of his being. In André Rublev's famous icon of the Holy Trinity, it's virtually impossible to distinguish the three angels who represent the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Their faces and other physical attributes are identical. One image, we might say. One might also notice that there is no suggestion of gender, male or female, in them. It would seem that iconographers like Rudloff have always been far ahead of their time in perceiving and portraying something which words alone have failed to express adequately. In any case, only superficial things like their clothing offer any distinction. And as I said, this is superficial. What is important is that there are three persons, but one God. With human beings, it would seem to be the opposite. Every human being is visibly unique. Even identical twins have distinguishing features. Nevertheless, with all of our differences, we are all created in the image of the indistinguishable persons of the Holy Trinity. There is one image, the image of God, and we are, every one of us, created in that one image. There are many persons, but one humanity. Some might think that it is enough to spend Trinity Sunday reflecting on such mysteries as these. However, we can and should go further. For you and me to be created in the image of God is an awesome thing to contemplate. And contemplation is a good thing. It helps us to put our lives, our relationships, and our world into perspective. Nevertheless, Contemplation is not a passive pursuit. Understanding the world must bring us to the realization that we are part of the world, 
And to understand that we are created in the image of God means that we must act like God. God is not passive. God never stands still. So just as the presence of God disperses darkness and chaos and brings order and life, so must our presence, so must our lives do the same. That purpose and responsibility is perhaps more needful today than it has ever been before. In so many ways, our world seems to be descending into darkness and chaos. A global pandemic continues to take lives in diminishing but still staggering numbers, and no cure is yet in sight. The dying and the dead were also created in the image of God. The dying and the dead are members of the single humanity which God created in his image. So every death diminishes every one of us, whether it is a loved one or a stranger, a friend or a foe. The world economy has been devastated. People are unemployed, homeless, and hungry as a result. More lives will be shattered more deaths will occur. Lives of people who are part of the single humanity in which we all share. Loved ones and strangers, friends and foes. And in recent days, we have had graphic reminders that the bonds of our common humanity continue to be shattered by the systemic racism that is pervasive in our own country, as well as the racist ideologies of the world that is divided by nationalism, colonialism, and massive economic injustice. Every day, lives are shattered and more deaths occur because of racist brutality, discrimination, and persecution. Lives of people who are, in truth, no different than you or me, and are part of the single humanity in which we all share. Loved ones and strangers, friends and foes. As Christians, as children of God, it falls to us, we who understand that we are created in the image of God, to say with God, let there be light. It falls to us, we who bear the likeness of God, to be the light. It falls to us to stand up to the darkness, to resist evil, to transform the chaos, and to heal division. It falls to us to assert and to live these basic truths of our common humanity. We all belong to God in whose image we are created. And we all belong to one another because we all share the same image. The image that binds us to God and God to us and us to one another. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for William our Bishop and all of the clergy and people of this diocese, for the clergy and people of the churches of Salem and Hebron, for this parish, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace throughout the world, for those who seek peace and those who guard the peace, for goodwill among nations, for the healing of racial and economic divisions in our own country, for those who govern, and for all who strive to create a more just society, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the unemployed, and the economically disadvantaged, for the sick, especially those suffering and dying from the coronavirus, for the hungry, especially those who are served by our local food pantry and those who serve them, for the oppressed throughout the world, especially those persecuted for their religion, and for all refugees and for those in prison, especially those who are unjustly incarcerated. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God for a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they may find and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed especially George, Brianna, and all victims of racial violence, for Athena, and all victims of the coronavirus. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Paul, Thomas of Canterbury, and all the saints. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. O God, who has made us in thy own image and redeemed us through Jesus thy Son, Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. 
and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish thy purposes on earth, that in thy good time all nations and races may serve thee in harmony around thy heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Thanks be. 